Good evening. What I've got on the table today is what I am calling the Facebook Marketplace 91 Surpass Enigma engine. This is an engine I just did a disassembly video on uh, yesterday, in fact. And it was an engine that was very inexpensive. Well, not as inexpensive as I'd like to have been now. But it was under $100 on Facebook. Had really no real information on it. But as I discovered in that disassembly, there was quite a bit of uh, damage to it, really. And I guess the first thing I'm going to show you is this crankcase has, well, it's got a broken fin here, which obviously I can't do anything about, but it had a bunch of plier marks or chewing up areas here on these fins. So what I've done is I've utilized this nice set of diamond files, small diamond files that I've got now. Actually, they're just needle files. But uh, so I was kind of cleaning this area up Kind of going this way with a flat file and then going in between the fins to try to at least take the rough edges off on both sides and it does look a little bit better and that's really about all that could be done with this crankcase and the crankcase is in pretty good shape now i think now if you recall when i took this rear cover off it had a circular big circular ring of dark matter on there like basically metal metal shavings so i've been trying to figure out where in the heck could this metal shavings have come from that would have resulted in that because if you look at this rear cover there's not an excessive amount of circling here not like it was a, a high time engine or anything so it almost appears that whenever that stuff was it took place over the course of one run maybe two runs I don't know it wiped off very easily so that's cleaned off trying to figure out where that metal could have come from so the connecting rod and piston pin are the piston pin is interesting because this thing I didn't clean this piston pin up at all it's shiny and it was shiny when I took the engine apart which is un, very unusual. So I was suspecting that this engine had just recently been uh, disassembled and reassembled and maybe run and then something wasn't quite right with the reassembly and that's what resulted in the, uh, the metallic um, buildup on the rear cover, I'm guessing. Um, but the connecting rod does not appear to be bent. It's not chewed up. It has no gouges in it. So it's not like it looks like it ingested a bearing at all because if it, the bearings came loose, this thing would be all damaged up. And this wasn't the connecting rod wasn't bad at all. Likewise, the crankshaft is in good shape too. Now I don't have a means to test whether it's true or not, but I don't see any visible damage to it. It looks fine to me. And the thing, the kicker is, is there's no slop here. I mean, this is a perfect fit, so it's not like this thing was really sloppy and worn or whatever. And the, you, know, you know, it's not like the connecting rod here is wore out. This is a very good fit. There's no slop there, so that seems really fine. So I don't understand that either. Everything looks in good working order here. Now, the piston and sleeve. I got the piston inserted in here. I did put all of these parts in the ultrasonic cleaner and clean them, you know, somewhat. The piston I've taken quite a bit of time with. I, I did a little bit of sandpaper here, emery cloth on the top here to get the rest of that carbon off. But uh, the skirt of this piston was really chewed up right around here. Pretty much just this side here. And again, using those needle files, I cleaned that up took all the burrs off and all that and got that nice and smooth now. Smooth on the outside, smooth on the inside. Now this hole for the piston pin was also a little bunged up somehow. It's almost like they didn't know whoever was working on this engine was using, I don't know. I don't know how that could have happened. But I used a, one of my round files to clean that up and then some emery cloth to go around this way and this is nice and smooth now and the pin 
goes in and out very easily now. It's, I'm saying that and now it's not doing it. It's Maybe it's because I've got those spacers in there. See, now, piston pin goes in and out really, really well now. I put these uh, retainers back in. So, I mean, that, the piston is fine now. It would appear, the, the ring, I took the ring off and it seems fine, so. I looked inside the sleeve with a magnifying glass and a flashlight and I don't see any damage. I don't see any scoring or scratching or anything. This, everything seems like it's in really good shape and that's the thing that's just so odd about it. Now this drive hub also had some plier marks on it so I went over with the file and sandpaper and, and got most of those off so it doesn't look quite as bad. It doesn't have any sharp edges. Cam cover, same thing. It had one area here that I don't know how you get a plier mark on the outside like that, but it did. So I filed that down with a flat file and then ran this over some sandpaper. So there's a little bit of material removed from the top of this thing. But uh, otherwise, you don't really see or notice those marks anymore. But the thing that was so unusual about this engine when disassembling it was it was extremely easy to disassemble. I mean, extremely easy. And like it had just been rebuilt incorrectly, maybe run one time, it didn't seem right, and then they just gave up on it. I don't know, because the cam followers had no buildup on them whatsoever. They popped right out. I haven't touched these things at all. I didn't even put them in the ultrasonic. They were fine, and they're not damaged. And same with the rocker arms. No buildup at all. They were perfect. These haven't been cleaned. In fact, they look brand new, which is really odd. So I mean there's just a lot of odd things about this engine. The head was in the ultrasonic cleaner but I mean the valves, springs are good. Everything's clean. It was just missing a the head gasket here which I've got a gasket set on order and I've got a set of bearings on order. So overall I think this engine will be a decent runner. I don't think that I would ever want to sell it and I certainly wouldn't sell it for even when I got into it because I just don't I just don't know if I would feel right about that. But we'll see how it runs. It's got like I said this is broken and that's noticeable even with the head on there. But uh, other than that, I think the thing will be a decent runner. It's just it's one of those things where I kind of enjoy doing some of the detective work and maybe just kind of trying to figure out or guess what happened with an engine and to me it just seems like this was disassembled and put back together by someone who was very inexperienced and didn't really have the right tools or whatever and apparently the engine wasn't really cared for properly either because you got plier marks on the drive hub and so I you know I understand that sometimes props and nuts get tightened so much that there's really no way to loosen them other than to grab whatever you can to get the thing off but you know I've done it before too and I've had you know it's just not a pleasant thing to do because sometimes you'll get an engine and it's like they come with a prop and it's like you have no choice but to grab it with something but if you have that situation the best possible thing that you can do is at least at least find an old piece of leather a leather glove an old leather glove and cut the finger off or something or at least protect or use soft jawed pliers to hold this thing but if nothing else put a leather glove around it and then just be very mindful that if there's any slippage at all between the pliers and this you're probably going to cut through anything and mar up i just don't ever like seeing marred up prop washers because that just totally tells me that somebody didn't really have the most experience or know what they were doing it's just kind of one of those indications so anytime you're buying a used engine that's always the first thing i look at is what does the drive hub look like if it's got marks all over it especially really deep ones you got to start kind of wondering about the previous owners of the engine and what they knew and what their experience level was and then it kind of makes you wonder about how the inside of the engine is now here are the bearings that came out of this now on the surface, now I did put these in the ultrasonic cleaner. They don't look bad. Now this rear bearing is very noisy, but it doesn't feel 
grindy anymore. This front bearing has got a little bit of grit still in it. So the only thing I can come up with is why you had, or why there was this black ring here, was that there must have just been something in the bearing that came out. I, I, I don't know, because it's in a circular. It came out while it was running, or somebody was turning it over with a, an electric starter. But, I mean... I don't see, and the piston was the other thing, the piston skirt with some of those, uh, the notches and, the, and that stuff in it was maybe another culprit that would cause some metallic material to come off, but the thing is, it didn't seem to damage inside of the sleeve, so it makes me wonder how could that, how could that have been aluminum from the piston? wearing or whatever if there's no evidence inside the sleeve so there's just a lot of questions about this engine that i probably won't be able to ever completely answer but like i said i've got a set of bearings on here on order and i've got a head gasket set or a gasket set and i think it comes with a rear cover gasket and then of course the head gasket so once those things come in i'll reassemble this engine and then of course once winter breaks this will be yet another one of those engines in line for running and i have high hopes that this engine will run fine like i said it'll probably just be a keeper for me and just run it and you know enjoy it as it is it won't look super pretty but it should run fine so that's the update on this i'll provide another update once i've completed the reassembly maybe i'll film the reassembly i, I don't know if i will or not but We'll see. We'll see how it comes, how I'm feeling about that when the parts come in.